Hey guys, today I'll be talking to you about unintentional discharges. No, I don't mean just accidental discharges and I don't mean negligent discharges. I'm talking about unintentional discharges. Both of what I just described, a negligent and an accidental discharge, are going to fall under the category of unintentional discharges. Meaning an unintentional discharge is whenever I don't want my gun to fire and it fires for whatever reason, whether it be the quote accident or something negligent on my part. Now, just to be clear, I'm focusing on just the average everyday guy. Not guys like you hear pounding these shots off over here, that's law enforcement, doing some training right over here. I'm not talking about law enforcement and I'm not talking about military. I'm not talking about guys who on an everyday basis may face some kind of different situation where they're running, jumping with firearms and it's part of their job to use their firearm as a tool in their everyday job. I'm not talking about the guy that's scaling, uh, you know, falling out of helicopters and, you know, climbing the sides of buildings and whatnot. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about me and you. I'm talking about normal, everyday, average guys. Negligent and accidental discharges. Let's look at the differences. An accidental discharge is a mechanical malfunction not caused by neglect. Now, I don't mean that something I did wasn't the cause. I mean, I wasn't directly or indirectly the cause, and that was an accident. That might be uh, a round cooking off. That might be a slam fire. It's something that there was nothing I could have done in any kind of way, whether it's in the past, the present, or the future, to prevent that accidental round or that round from accidentally going off. There's nothing I could have done. That is a true accidental discharge. Now, that does not include a lot of what some of you may be thinking because I've gotten some pretty interesting feedback on some of my uh, posts out there and some of my previous videos where a lot of you out there don't want to take a whole lot of uh, accountability for your own actions. And it's it, it, it really surprised me that the gun community was so unaccountable for a lot of its own actions. And I don't mean the gun uh, community in general. I mean, there's a very large portion of you guys out there who really think that accidents do just happen. Let's talk about negligent discharges, and that might make a little bit more sense to you. A negligent discharge is when a firearm goes off when it fires and there's something that I could have done to prevent it. Now, that could be I don't service the gun, if I don't clean the gun, and suddenly it's got a delayed fire and I pulled the trigger and I looked and all of a sudden it shoots at somebody or it goes off when it's not supposed to. That's my fault. That is not an accidental discharge. That is a negligent discharge. I neglected my duties and my responsibilities in keeping these weapons clean and serviceable, and that's my fault. That is a negligent discharge. If you drop a gun, it's negligent. I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry. I know that hurts a lot of your feelings. That is negligent. You dropped the gun. You had a loaded gun. You had a gun that could end somebody's life and you dropped it for whatever reason. Oh, were you scared? Were you scared and you dropped it? Your fault, maybe you're not trained. Maybe you shouldn't have a gun. If somebody walks up behind you and goes, boo, and you drop the gun and it goes off and hits somebody, maybe you're not the kind of person that should be operating a handgun that can kill somebody. Many of the other situations that I've heard people call accidental discharges act like it was not their fault or anyone else's fault are a seat belt hooks on a gun, pulls the gun out, the gun flies across the parking lot, pow, it goes off. Their gun in a holster hits a car door or the door jam when they're getting in, knocking the gun out of its cheap holster, falling to the ground, and it goes off. It's your fault. That is your fault. Holstering a gun with your finger in the trigger. I don't know how you can call that accidental, but some people call that accidental. That is a negligent discharge. Dropping the gun at the range. Again, if somebody goes boo and you drop the gun, maybe you're not the right person to be handling a loaded firearm. Hands are wet, so I dropped the gun. It wasn't my fault. Really? You couldn't think far enough ahead to dry your hands off before grabbing a hand cannon that can blow somebody's head off if used incorrectly. That thought never crossed your mind? That's your fault. How many times have we heard this one? Cleaning a gun. I was cleaning my gun and it went off. Yeah, we know Glocks are notorious for you gotta pull the trigger first. Still your fault. Is it really Glock's fault because you did not unload the gun? Is it really their fault? Not clearing a shotgun after hunting. How many times have we heard that? How many times have we seen somebody in a blind take two of the rounds out and some of these guns, Benelli's and some of the others, you have to know what you're doing in order to get that round out of the chamber also. And some people don't do that properly. So what they're doing is they're, they're multiply 
uh, trying to clear that gun to get that magazine tube empty, all the while leaving one sitting in the chamber. They throw the gun in there, never put it back on safe, or it wasn't on safe to begin with. They leave it in there, they go to get it out. I've seen stories where dogs go to jump out of the back of a tailgate of a, of a truck and their paw hits the trigger of a gun that's loaded and does, it's not on safety and it fires and hits somebody. That's negligent. You forgot to unload the shotgun. That's on you. You leave a gun unattended and a child gets a hold of it. Come on, really? Handing a loaded gun to a friend. I didn't know it was loaded. Okay, two of you are at fault. I'm sorry, guys. Two of you are at fault. The idiot that handed you a loaded gun, number one, that's the problem. You clear the gun before you hand it to somebody. Idiot number two was the person who accepted the gun and didn't check to see if it was clear. You always check to see. I don't care if the person tells you it's not loaded. You assume it's loaded. We're going to talk about the four rules of gun safety in a minute, but they prevent all of these things from happening. When somebody hands a loaded gun to somebody else and they negligently discharge that gun, two of you are at fault and two of you ignored all the rules of gun safety. Last but not least, one of the biggest ones I can think of is you should not be dancing with a loaded firearm in your back. You should not be cutting flips. When your gun does fall out, you should not be reaching for it and grabbing it with your finger in the trigger guard. We all know what I'm talking about here. I want to tell you one little story. I'm not perfect. I know some of you watching this might be thinking, yeah, he thinks he's perfect. No, I know I'm not perfect. A lot of the things that I just told you, I've been through those things. I've, got, I've had close calls. I've had a really close call one time. I was in a duck blind when I was about ah, 23, 24 years old. I was on the far left-hand side. I had an old Mossberg pump shotgun that I would go duck hunting with. I lived down here in South Louisiana. And because of the brackish waters that we deal with, salt water and fresh water mixes, I wasn't gonna bring one of my dad's nice, nice shotguns or one of my nice shotguns out there. When I was going hunting out in the swamps, in the brackish waters down here in South Louisiana, I always brought my old piece of junk, $99 Mossberg pump action shotgun because I knew I could use it as a boat paddle if I needed to, it didn't matter. The problem was I became complacent because I knew it was a cheap shotgun. As long as I felt like it worked and the action cycled properly, I never cleaned this thing. Now I would lube it up every now and then, but I never disassembled it. I never took the trigger pack out or anything like that. I was sitting here on the far right hand side of a three man blind. I had a friend on one side, a friend in the middle, and then me. A group of ducks came in. It was my shot to take because they came in from the right hand side. I rose up, I went to take my shot, pulled the trigger, and I'm a halfway decent shot. So I was, I was a little shocked when nothing fell and I realized my gun did not go off. Now, when that happens to you and you know your gun should go off, you don't immediately notice that it didn't go off. Now, I knew it hadn't, obviously, but I, I pulled the trigger and I was like, okay, it did not go off. When I pulled the shotgun and went to look at the action, it went off then. And when it did go off, I'm looking at the gun like this, and it fires, and I immediately barely had time to turn my head to the side. And when I did, that barrel came up, and it hit me right across my left ear. Needless to say, things are ringing, heads thumping, ears boom, 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 boom. Got a little beating going on over there. The ducks all settled. My buddies took the ducks out and all that, and they're, I think they're probably wondering why I didn't shoot. And one of my friends says my ear was bleeding. My ear was bleeding from that rib of that shotgun hitting across it. Long story short, when we got back from hunting, after that I tried using my gun and it fired perfectly. We got back from hunting, went back to clean the ducks, disassembled my Mossberg, took the trigger pack out. There was full of grass in there, reeds. Any of you that hunt down here know the little reeds, the little strips of grass. It was full of it in there. How they got in there, I don't know, but it was from several, several trips, probably over the course of two or three, maybe four years of getting in there. That was my fault. That seems like a mechanical malfunction. Yes, it is. <laughs> if I had given that gun to somebody else, it would have probably been considered, under my definitions, an accidental discharge. If I would have given that to my friend and he shot it and it went off like that, that would have been an, ac an accidental discharge on his part. But because I'm the one that neglected the maintenance on that gun, and I'm the one that shot that gun, it's not an accidental discharge. I caused that problem. It's my fault. I was negligent. I created that negligent discharge. Guys, the four rules of gun safety are not just there for a cool t-shirt or bumper sticker. They're legitimate. These four rules of gun safety can and do, on a very, very regular basis, prevent a lot of negligent discharges. And let's think about this also, okay? If we want to consider that a slam fire and cooking off rounds are also 
uh, or not also, but they are accidental, truly accidental discharges, not negligent, but they are truly accidental and there's nothing that me or you could have done to prevent them, guess what? The four rules of gun safety would still prevent anyone from getting injured. If I treat my gun as if it's loaded, when it does accidentally cook that round off or accidentally slam fire, guess what it's not doing? It's not shooting somebody else. I did not create a statistic. The only category I went in statistically was I had an accidental discharge. But no one was hurt because I practiced the four rules of gun safety as everyone should. Again, these four rules of gun safety will stop people from getting hurt or worse, kill. Just because we have habits, bad habits, just because of the neglect to our weapons and the, the negligence that we have when operating them and not treating them the right way and not doing the right things with them whenever we're supposed to from a safety standpoint, just because we do all these bad things doesn't mean that we cannot eliminate 100% of people getting accidentally shot by negligent discharges. Because most of your rules are gonna at least stop these things, the finger and the trigger. Bam, there goes a whole bunch of them right there. Right off the bat, a bunch of people don't get shot because these idiots are not keeping their fingers now in the, in the trigger guard, they're outside of them. That's where a lot of your negligent discharges are. Accidents do happen, but they don't just happen. They are preventable. A lot of our negligent discharges are the result of a couple of things. Distractions. A lot of times we get distracted. We have somebody talking to us whenever we're about to clean our gun. We forget to take that one out of the chamber. We forget to uh, remove the magazine and clear the gun. Distractions. That's one thing you want to minimize and eliminate. Get the distractions away from you when you're dealing with handguns, rifles, shotguns, any kind of firearm and ammunition. Complacency. You know what? A lot of us, and I'm guilty of it too, we get brave around firearms. We deal with them so much, they don't feel like there's much of a danger. Look, from the first time I touched a gun till today, they are just equally as dangerous as they ever were. They never became less dangerous in my world. I just feel like they're less dangerous because I feel more confident around those guns. That's complacency. I have to remind myself sometimes, I am dealing with something that can render me dead. <laughs> I actually have tourniquets because I come out here and film a lot by myself sometimes. I have tourniquets that I keep in my own vehicle because I know that sometimes I get complacent around my firearms and I want to make sure that I get out of here in the event that I do accidentally shoot myself with a negligent discharge. See, fatigue is probably one of the last ways that um, you really got, you, you fall in some traps where you don't ex exercise the full rules of gun safety. A lot of times we get tired. We might be on a gun range. Maybe we're shooting USPSA or something like that. And it's a hot day and there's a bunch of stages or something. You know, a lot of times your mind just doesn't think as sharply as it should whenever you do have those types of situations. So when you find yourself getting really dehydrated or very tired on the range, maybe call it quits. Maybe take a break. Get away from those for a minute. Clear your gun first and then go sit down in a safe spot. Guys, if we are lazy and unaccountable and blame accidents as uncontrollable and unpreventable instances, we will not learn. And we will probably wind up with the same results again and again and again. We have got to learn from our mistakes. We cannot have a negligent discharge and sit back and go, eh, not my fault, that was an accident, and relieve ourselves of any accountability whatsoever. We've got to accept our accountability, learn from that mistake, learn from our mistake that we just made, and make sure and ensure that that never happens again. Because you know what? When that negligent discharge just goes into the dirt to my left and nobody's around, nobody saw it, that's still a learning moment for me. Because the next time it happens, because I blow that off and act like it was an accident, there could be a child sitting right there. That's not something I'm willing to live with. We can't be like the anti-gun guys. We can't do that. What I mean by that is they constantly blame inanimate objects. They never want to assign the blame where it belongs with the actual person committing the crime or doing the dirty deed. We can't fall in that same trap. How are we, as true pro-gun Second Amendment supporters, going to look whenever we bash and we belittle the left for making it sound like they're always blaming an inanimate object and never taking responsibility for their own actions whenever we won't do the same, whenever we blame the gun because it just went off, it just fired, not my responsibility. It makes us look just as stupid as they look. 